Hi right, guys and welcome to our project breakdown for Leonidas. So Leonidas was a track that we released in an EP for US based label Kano Village. Um, it was our last EP of the year and we had you guys vote for which song you wanted us to break down from the EP and it actually ended up being 50-50 so we chose Leonidas. Um, yeah, we just figured that there's quite a bit going on in Leonidas, as I'm sure you guys might have heard. So there's a lot of cool tidbits that you guys can learn just from going through um, this project alone. As you can see, there's a lot going on. We'll just sort of break it down bit by bit and give you guys like a rough idea of what the process was in creating it and how we got uh, to the end result. Okay, so let's have a playthrough of the track and you guys can get an idea of the arrangement and just become familiar with the sounds. So basically how we get started with a track is we first establish a little loop to basically give us an idea of what the theme of the song is going to be like and just basic drums so that we can start to get in touch with the, the actual basic energy of the song. Mm -hmm. And like the, the main approach behind this track is uh, we sort of were moving a little bit away from like our usual growly sort of hectic sound design um, bass house and try to create something more groove orientated. Uh, so usually with our approach with more groove orientated type of tracks, we like to lay down the drums first and just get like a simple kind of bass line groove. So initially the main idea of the track started out with just this drum loop and just a short bass giving a rough idea of the general groove of the song. And then usually once we've established like the main rhythmic um, sort of sound of the song, we start working on uh, just arranging as, as quickly as we possibly can. We start working on arranging the, the first breakdown and first drop just so we can have like a rough idea of where the track is going to head. Okay, so yeah, we have basically a standard club arrangement here, but we have added a, an extra drop in the middle. Uh, so that we can add emphasis on the third breakdown. Yeah, and typically like our third breakdowns tend to be um, a lot longer than the first. And if we have like that extra drop in the middle, that will we'll consider the uh, a second a second breakdown as well. But we like to extend our third breakdown because um, usually by the time you reach that third breakdown, which will be at like ninety seven, you'll have a rough idea of the whole song and like how it's how the groove is laid out. So you're unlikely to get bored by the more open and uh, spread out uh, third breakdown. So I'll actually just go through each section just to give you an idea of the progression uh, of the arrangement. So our intro, like I just mentioned now, now with how we come up with the idea is just like the drums and simple groove. And the first breakdown, we start getting our melodic elements. Our first drop. Usually, when we create um, uh, a song that has an extra drop somewhere in the middle, our second breakdowns are usually not too long. So, in this case, it's only about eight bars. So, we just keep the rhythm going. Not too chaotic of a second build up. Bit more of a fleshed out drop with a, a few more top line elements. And then, as I mentioned before, our third breakdowns are usually a lot bigger and more lush, as you can see by this 
sort of extended nature here. There isn't really too much going on that's um, that you can latch onto from the drops, but it's because you're used to it already, you can sort of keep it going. So if you listen through here to the last breakdown, you'll notice that we have started to emphasize the idea that um, there has to be something new coming into the third drop because if you listen through to the song you'll notice that um, there's a continuous theme of everything opening up and uh, all of the parameters eventually joining the club and becoming the, the open <laughs> envelope gang. <laughs> uh, so if you listen through there we've basically started to lean to the idea that there's going to be a full opening up of everything yeah there's sort of a lot of elements like the bass line that you'll hear coming in around here uh just teasing towards a, a new sort of rhythm and a more open kind of sound design and also um if you pay attention to the synth as well uh it's playing sort of chords we're talking to how we use uh, music theory to sort of build tension on our tracks as well but this the actual sound design of the synth is opening up quite a bit just to create that rising sort of tension. If you look here at the drums, you'll notice that um, we have a lot of kicks. Uh, the reason that we have so many kicks is that we want to create a unique kick sound uh, that you really need to start layering your kicks to get more control over your high end, your mids and your lows. We've automated the sustain on the lowest kick. This is just so that we can have a, a much shorter sort of um, low kick because we found that um, usually if you have a bigger bass sound, uh, you need a shorter kick. You can't really have both a big kick and a big bass. They sort of clash a lot. So by shortening um, our sort of subby kick, it gives us more room to work with uh, for the actual bass. With our sort of layering, we usually just split it into three, like I said. So it would be our low kick, our mid kick and our top kick. Our low kick would be predominantly just the sub frequencies. So if you have a look on the actual EQ, which is not on, but um, if you just have a look, it's mostly just the low end kick. And this kick, I believe, was made in kick two. Uh, it's just a relatively simple kick to make. Uh, but once we layered it with a couple other kicks, like our mid range kick, which we sort of EQ to sort of sit in like the mids and slightly in the tops just to give it a bit of presence and we added in a top kick which will just literally be like the click you can even use like a hi-hat or something for this roll this is just a short little click together it gives us a full unique sort of kick sound and as you can see on like each kick channel there isn't a lot of processing going to create this kind of kick sound uh, sometimes it's better to just lay a bunch of different sounds in your drums instead of looking for that one perfect kick drum. You can sort of tweak your way into creating the, the kick that you're looking for. Yeah, uh, a lot of producers really try to find the best kick drum, like just to get that perfect sample or that perfect patch or that perfect whatever that they think is just going to become their perfect kick for everything. Uh, meanwhile, you can just swap out and change parts of the same kick just in so many layers and create so many different versatile kicks that you uh, can tailor make to every single track rather than trying to find something that's perfect for every track because you, you're you not going to find one. Yeah, uh, and sort of the same principle gets carried over to our claps. Uh, there's a few techniques that we like to use uh, when we're sort of creating a, a whole clap uh, stack. 
um usually with regards to our base house we always try to make sure that there is a pre-shifted clap so a clap that doesn't hit exactly on the same um millisecond as the kick this is just to have a clap that actually cuts through the mix a bit better and doesn't uh, sort of get destroyed by the limiter at the end so our clap sound sounds like this so just um like we said we tried to have a pre-shifted layer so we have two pre-shifted claps one is just slightly pre-shifted uh, this is actually the same clap we've used for many many years just adding the layers over time gives us a unique sort of clap sound so this is like a slightly pre-shifted clap if you have a look if you actually listen back to our old songs um, and you just go through our discography basically you can just watch the evolution of, of, of the clap it just, get thicker <laughs> it just gets and thicker. thicker and thicker and bigger <laughs> just like year by year there's just like is, is that another clap on there and it's like oh look another another one yeah. So a couple of years from now, you're going to hear there's just be like 25 claps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this clap is made out of four different claps. One slightly pre-shifted, just a tiny bit. Uh, this clap is more pre-shifted, just giving it a bit of width as well. Uh, and then we'll usually have like a low clap, which you don't actually hear that much in context, but it definitely adds a lot of body to the to the whole clap sound. And then Snappy Boy over here is our trusty sort of bright clap that we used in quite a few tracks, especially lately. Um, so all together, these claps make a very full, all over the spectrum kind of sound. Very nice and wide. And uh, it's exactly what we're looking for in context with the kick. Next, we will just touch on the hi-hats of the track. Uh, I don't believe the hi-hats in this track were too complicated. Uh, the hats in this track is pretty much just your standard sort of offbeat hat pattern. Uh, there is a bit of um, uh, an accent here and there with this shaker sound. Uh, the hats sound like this. That sort of shaker sound just adds a bit of bounce to the overall pattern. It doesn't sound like just the same loop happening every a single beat and uh, we also added this shaker on like on the first and second step of every beat and added a side chain to further give it more bounce yeah just by side chaining it and like dimming the volume on that initial first shaker that's happening on the kick um, it does give the hats like a bit more of a rhythmic sound as, as opposed to just having them straight uh, let's switch this off and you'll hear what I mean those shakers are just sort of just going at the same volume. Having that sort of variety between the actual first shaker and the offbeat one gives you a bit of bounce in the hat pattern. So if you listen to all of the sounds in the song, um, you can clearly hear that we've decided to try and emphasize rhythm um, as opposed to the style that we have in our more traditional bass house tracks. So as you can tell, all the way down into the drums or even down into the hat specifically, we've gone uh, and emphasized rhythm. Yeah. So by now we've sort of built our normal standard um, house sort of rhythm in our drums. We've got our kick, clap, hat going. And this is when we would start okay, adding elements that are a little more unique within the drum. So we'll start adding some textures here and there. Uh, usually comprising of like, it can be vinyl crackle, it can be sort of weird crunch samples. Sometimes we'll have a vocal chop here and there just to create a bit more of a unique layer that we can use within our drums. And these sort of sounds aren't the most audible in the drum bus, but they do um add a bit of character to them uh among these crunches as well there's um, a little vocal sample which is just like a breath and thereafter we'll once we feel like the drums aren't as full as they could be so yeah we've got our rhythm and our textures here and there but sort of a quick and efficient way to create more uh, groove within your drums is to just play around with loops and chop them up. Uh, obviously, we don't just sort of take a loop and 
just throw it on there and then pretend like we're good to go. We usually chop it up, mess around with the sample. Uh, here in this sort of loop, which is a loop that I believe we found in a garage sample pack. Yeah, you could you? Yeah, it's we like to take sounds from all different kinds of genres um, and just play around with them. So this is from like a, a garagey sample pack. It has quite a few nice sort of percussion sounds. So we just chopped it up and placed it where we needed it in our drums. Obviously to make sure it doesn't take like an overbearing roll, we had to sort of trim down on some parts of it and just place it exactly where we wanted it to sit in our drum bus. So if you take a look here, you'll see it basically just aids in filling all of the spaces that are, are left um, in the actual drum bus. So you'll never see it overlapping with any of the actual sounds that we've chosen, like our, like our clap or our kick or anything like that. It's mainly just filler to fill things out in the drums so that we can have a nice, you know, full drum bus to keep the energy going through the, the house theme. Yeah. Uh, just to finish off the, the drum sounds, we have just a few more sort of um, effects just here and there just to aid in filling out the drum bass. So here we'll have like just that breath sound. What even is this? Oh, it's also another breath. Yeah. If we jump ahead, what we usually like to do at the sort of peak of our tracks like the highest part of our tracks in in terms of drum bus energy is when we start using the the ride symbol okay so next we're going to be speaking about the bass um which we basically <laughs> which we basically uh took two sounds and and tried to get uh, some more variety into the the sound uh, and basically the flow of the bass line in the, the drop. So how we've done that is we have two different sounds and one plays basically like a call and the other one is a response. So it's like almost like Marco Polo with your bass lines. <laughs> <laughs> so if you listen through to the bass in the beginning. Line, you'll notice that it starts to get progressively bigger as the song as the song progresses if you listen here over into the next part as you can hear we've opened up a lot of the parameters and we have our cutoff envelope open more than it was before yeah and a couple stabs here and there just adding to the the overall rhythm of the bass yeah so what we've gone and done is had a full bass line with a lot of notes in it and taken the busiest uh, version of that and put that here in where we want basically the full version of the the bass to play with all of the bells and whistles uh, and we've made sure that what you've heard prior up to this is a uh, drawn back version of it so it's basically not the full send um, so if you listen through to the one before it there's not as many notes and it's literally just two sounds just playing a call and response whereas in the second drop you start to hear like a little bit of a wider sound here and there so the sound is basically a serum patch um, that we had made for a previous song, Look At You. It just has a square wave. Um, and for the second one, we actually added another layer. We added another oscillator onto that. Uh, so and that would be serum 4. Yeah, so you can see there's just another sawtooth oscillator with um, a bunch more voices um, just basically beefed up things for the the full send version of the bass okay so if you listen through to the bass you can obviously tell that there's a recurring theme of everything opening up 
um, and there being more sounds and more versions of the same bass line. So in this uh, breakdown, we decided that we need to add a lot of tension and a way that we like to do that is we like to have a filtered version of the, the bass uh, that opens up and creates some tension because a lot of people like to keep their bass away from the breakdown but we feel like if you have it there and it's a very drawn back version of it uh, it's very apparent that uh, there is tension going on because obviously your bass is not gonna sound so drawn back um, in the drop so it's an in-your-face way to say there's gonna be something um, exciting happening yeah and the sort of bass sound that we have in the in the breakdown as well also hints at the the rhythm that the rhythm change that happens in the third drop because if we just sort of drop that third drop at you without giving you a sort of idea of what to expect it may catch you off guard but having this really helps so you can have a listen as to what that does and how it supplements the 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 change breakdown you'll notice that we have a big fat wop in the middle of a <laughs> breakdown uh, and it's something that a lot of people would be very shy to do to have bass before the drop but we feel that when you have that little false start uh, it gives like a naughty feel to to the crowd and to the listener that there's two things happening um, we kind of playing with you and that also that there's tension that there's something that um, wants to come out so it's like almost like like the the baseline is trying to get out of some sort of uh, it wants to be released it, <laughs> it has evil intent so we kind of like to have that tension growing in the song the next thing we're going to be speaking about is the synths that we use in the track um, I think what makes this track as sort of complex as it is is mostly just the amount of automation like you guys can check it's a bit some will say it's excessive but <laughs> that's just how we keep things interesting uh so we'll just talk about some of the synths that we have in this track uh the main sort of synth that uh you can pick out from this tune is the main wob type of sound and we created that sort of a melody just playing off the the actual bass line like we said when we start our tracks it's usually just like drums and a bass rhythm especially if it's a rhythm driven track like this so if you play the the bass line and the synth in tandem tandem is what mm -hmm. if you play the bass line and the synth in tandem you'll hear that they they match up quite a bit rhythmically Turn up. hear that we've also followed you'll hear that we've also followed a call and response kind of a, a layout in the synth so that it matches up with the bass and that it gives you that real back and forth kind of a feel um, which promotes like a flow of energy and keeps the track feeling like it's constantly moving and it's it's not gonna ever be too repetitive over a, a period of time yeah so for the call and response we just bounced uh, between these two patches uh, also following the same sort of melodic call and response of the bass line Turn up. so the call is that big brassy kind of synth and then it bounces back into this more cheeky kind of um, whiny synth uh so mainly in the drop we just have those two sounds but as you'll find out as we go through this track now i'll show you how this sort of um patch this brassy sound grows over time so at first in the initial drop it sounds like this Turn up. and then as we fast forward to the next section it gets a little bit bigger Turn up. 
and then by the time this sound reaches the end of the track it'll be like at its biggest um also adding extra notes to add a bit more harmonic content to it Yeah, so that's just how that sound in particular grows over the, the course of the track. Uh, just to talk about the, the actual sort of more sustained um, synths that we have in this track, there isn't really many. There's just this sort of um, pad that we've got from a free plugin um, called Tyrell. I think it's supposed to emulate some sort of old uh, analog gear, as you can see by all the fancy rust and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just uh, played around with this pad just to create our sort of progression and um, chord structure in the in the breakdown, which is that weird sort of ominous kind of pad in the background. Uh, we did a similar thing in the last breakdown, but what I want to touch on is how we um, use a bit of music theory to sort of add tension to, to the track. So here we have just like a simple serum patch, just like your regular sort of pad sound uh, with just this weird um, barred metal kind of oscillator that just adds a nice character to the sound. This sound... Um, we also automated the cutoff to open up as the as the track progresses. And what you also find is we added extra notes to the actual chords. So yeah, just with that, I'd like to stress how it's actually a good idea to just. Um, figure out ways of not necessarily using only sound design to create tension but also playing around with just stacking notes and just creating tension using just simple um music theory yeah um the best way to create tension and actually get the listener involved in the song is to use uh what they aren't thinking about all of the feelings that the the song generates in somebody's uh mind or in in just their body sometimes uh you need to just use a bit of the subliminal to get people to feel that tension the other synth based kind of sounds that we have in the track are mostly just like a little bit of ear candy here and there just to further create more interest in the track like this falling chord sound <laughs> And that sort of effect is created just by sort of adding an LFO to the filter of a sound and then just slowing that LFO speed down to create like that fluttering kind of sound. I would show you the automation for that but it's somewhere in this mess. Yeah and other little synth ear candy we have here and there include like this little pluck sound which yeah, you'll find in the drop. So if you listen back here to what we did with the chords, uh, you'll notice we did a cheeky little thing where uh, we leaned to things opening up a lot. <laughs> over a short amount of time so we used some portamento in the chords here uh, to kind of give that cheeky little feel listen here you'll notice that at the end there's a uh, little bits that sound like um, a separate sound but it's actually the same sound uh, just 
really far out notes that um, we basically put some portamento to get like a, a pitch bend or slide kind of sound uh, of the synth changing. Yeah, just having that portamento adds a bit of character to the sound just from the changing in those. And lastly, in our synths, we just have your standard run-of-the-mill kind of string sound in 90% of house songs, just adding a bit of ambience to the breaks. So another little trick that we like to do uh, with our synths is just to resample them. Uh, so you can resample any sound just by going into your mixer and adding in Edison and then hitting record and playing that sound in. So we've already gone ahead and done that to, the, to our main sort of synth in the track, which is this um, WAP sound. So once we've reverb, we've added a bunch of reverb to that and then we recorded that in Edison, uh, we placed that in our playlist and just reversed it to get this kind of neat sweeping effect and then if you sweep that into the original sound it gives you a really nice sweeping transition effect so the reason that we like to resample and try to use uh, as much of the sound in different ways as possible is to create a sense of cohesion in the whole song and if you use less sounds uh, to do more things, the more the sounds will sound like each other, it will all together sound like one good homogenous uh, piece of music. All right, so another way we used the reverse sort of synth um, effect is just using it as like an effect that we can have that uh, facilitates the, the final drop, just adding a bit of character and flair to the last drop uh, so we just sort of stacked two versions of it the first being um, the one that you initially heard which is just the pitch down version just edited a little bit then by adding in like halfway through just a, another layer which is pitched up an octave I believe yeah it just gives it a bit more excitement and in context that adds like a really cool unique sound that we use to drop into the final drop okay so next we'll be speaking about the vocals that we used on the track we initially started with a splice vocal which sounds like this uh, which is actually the pitched down version, so it originally sounded like this. Hey, turn up. So what we decided to do is we pitch shifted it down by five semitones, and we shifted it back up, but not um, in the pitch. Actually, in the formant, we used little alter boy to bring the formant back up. So it's actually a way to make it sound like it hasn't been pitched down, but what's playing actually has been pitched down and gives it a really nice character to it and makes it sound like um, not just any old sample. Turn up. So apart from that original version of the vocal, uh, we also do have a, another original vocal which we have pitched down, one which is uh, a five as well as well as another one which is actually a full octave down so we've, we've laid it to give it um, some nice width there as well Turn up. yeah just that just makes it sound like a, a very more full vocal as opposed to just one single uh, channel of audio having those two other lower layers just makes us gives it a lot more body and presence so next we have this interesting little um, slowing down effect which is actually a vocal this is what it sounds like Turn up. so the way that we got that opening up and slowing down effect is what we've done is taken an automation on the actual volume of the sample 
and we have put an LFO on the speed of that. So it is actually increasing and decreasing while it is decreasing in 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 speed. Turn up. Yeah, and that like reverse sound is literally just um, the same process that we did with the synth. So we just have um, a part of the vocal that's just got like a lot of reverb. We record that in, place it in the playlist, and then just reverse it. And of course, we we needed to have the same width. So like before, we still have the same pitch down versions of it layered. Turn up. Okay, so if you guys look here, you'll see that uh, we have done quite an extensive processing chain on the vocal. As you can see, we have little Alter Boy here, which is what we've used to you uh, manipulate the formants like we mentioned um, as well as a lot of other fab filters um, and delays reverbs all of that kind of stuff uh, if you'd like to go more into detail with these kind of things like processing effects and all of that kind of thing um, send us a dm and we can explain some things to you yeah but just like as a rough overview with this vocal uh, most of it, like most of the, the, the reverbs and delays that we used was um, just effects that we like automate in and out. Like I'm sure you've seen earlier in the project, there's quite a few automation clips. A lot of them are just um, our way of bringing in a certain particular type of delay and taking it out when we need it here and there. Um, but yeah, it's it's very simple sort of processing on these vocals in particular. Just EQ, compression, and then all these uh, sort of other effects that we just automate in and out. Yeah, as you can see, we use basic like fruity delays and stuff like that. Yeah, we do have the Valhalla and, and, and stuff like that for your reverb and, and etc. But it's pretty simple processing. Okay, so what we have next is the effects and little bits of ear candy. So to start us off, we actually have something a little bit interesting. One of the sounds that you hear in the track, um, in the ear candy, is Janet Jackson. Um, funny enough, it's from uh, one of her songs in a section where she does like a little bit of a breathing thing. She's almost like leaning into some beatboxing. Uh, so we've sampled that. This is what it sounds like. Yeah, it's a part of like the drum bus. We just added these little breaths here in from the the Janet Jackson sample. They they're pretty soft, but we use them to just add character to the drums. Yeah. So the reason that we've chosen to add these textures to the drums is uh, as we mentioned before, it's a nice way to fill out your drums and to have your drums sounding nice and wholesome. But at the same time, what's important to remember is it's always going to be better if you can have some sort of human feel to it. So if you can add a human element to your drums, it's always going to sound more, more natural and that groove is going to be easier to become familiar with. Yeah, and there was no shortage of sort of that uh, natural breathing sound in the original sample there's a lot breathe as you can hear yeah and um other sort of effects that we have is uh, just pretty much your standard sweeps and uh, crashes and exhausts just acting as um transitions we do have some sounds that we've like resampled from the projects like reversed since i believe this is like a reversed kind of synth sound yeah those just help sort of with the transitions of the track so that every change in the song is not a complete uh, surprise and shock okay so as part of the um effect and ear candy we've also added other little things uh like textures such as your vinyl crackle and your just little bits of ambient noise and the reason that we do this is just so that you can get um, some sort of a tangible texture to the song um, that the ear can latch onto. Uh, similarly to in photography when people put uh, grain over their, their pictures, it's easier for the eye to look at than just a bunch of vivid colors. 
So it gives a, a, a nice little filter. There's something that we like to refer to as passive listening, which is all of those elements that you listen to in the background that you, you aren't actively thinking about hearing the sounds, but your subconscious is picking them up and, and hearing them, which like, for example, uh, if any of you are watching this with headphones on, can probably hear the river outside and probably some birds and the breeze. And it's probably making you feel like a little bit peaceful on the inside. Same kind of concept, except we're using vinyl crackle and other textures and ambient noises. Yeah. So we like to keep these kind of elements a little bit far back in the mix, not really um, in the forefront. It's just supposed to sit in the background to give you a sense of like ambience. Uh, like I feel like this vinyl crackle in particular is put down pretty low. It's minus 25, which is quite quiet, but any louder and it would have been sort of intrusive. Yeah, like there's quite a bit of low end as well there, so it would have hindered the mix. So we just kind of dial it back in. It's not entirely audible, but you can like sort of feel it um, throughout the track. Uh, in this particular case, we didn't run it through the whole track. It's just to supplement the the breakdowns. Uh, so I think this section is just the first breakdown. Yeah, because the breakdowns are very open, there's not a lot of drum elements and grooves going on. Just having the vinyl crackle adds to that open, ambient sort of feeling. And uh, one other sound, I think the last one in the effects, is this um, weird sound that I think we sampled from the 707. Uh, it's just this sort of weird effect that we used in one of the drops. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This definitely was from the 707. We actually created this when we were working on that project where we sampled the theremin. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that's where that comes from. Yeah. So the reason that we add sounds like this is because it kind of gives the song a, a bit of a mood of being in that kind of a twilight feeling where it's, it's, it's almost like uh, you can imagine some sort of nighttime scene it's almost illegal kind of like that kind of a sound because similar to a siren yeah it's just uh it gives it almost like a like a sinister kind of feel to it it just adds to the the general mood mm. all right so that is pretty much the entire mix down as a whole so Diving into what we did as far as mastering is concerned. Actually, um, I'm going to interject there. Uh, I don't think you guys are going to get into the mastering, unfortunately, because if you guys need mixing and mastering, you can either hit us up and we can offer some mixing and mastering services, or if you'd like to actually learn on how to do them yourselves, we do teach that as well. So thank you very much to everyone for tuning in and listening to us babble on about like 182 tracks worth of uh, us making noise. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us and stay tuned for a bit more of our unreleased music. Wait. Cheers, guys. Ah, go stream the tune. <laughs> <laughs> the track is out. The track is out now, like right now, like not, not tomorrow. Not, it's not releasing today. It's already out. Is there. Go stream it. <laughs> kind of village. <laughs>